Hello, so in this video I want to talk about cichlid. Uh, cichlid, if you're not familiar with the term, refers to narratives that deal with sickness and illness. And the term cichlid often refers to young adult literature. And I think this is because after the publication of John Green's The Fault in Our Stars and Jesse Andrews' Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl, people began to take notice of this presumed pattern in YA literature of authors who were writing about illness and mortality, often by populating their novels with characters who were dealing with terminal cancer. Um, this pattern, or sort of the rise of sick lit, uh, has created its own backlash. Not everyone is sort of on board with this upsurge in narratives that deal with illness. Um, for example, in the Daily Mail, there was an article published recently um, by someone who really summarized kind of what uh, many people saw as the problematic aspects of this subgenre, um, namely one that these narratives were emotionally man manipulative in their use of terminal illness to create um, emotional uh, drama or dramatic stakes. And then second, also, this, uh, this the author of this article really took issue with the fact that these novels' readers or the audience for these novels are young adults, are children often, and really kind of took issue or was concerned um, that young people were being fed a steady diet uh, of, of death and dying. Uh, like many think pieces, this then generated its own rebuttals. In The Guardian, there came, there was published a rebuttal to this, this initial essay, or excuse me, this initial article, that then um, def kind of defended the rise of narratives that dealt with illness, primarily um, because of this, of the idea that um, children and young people are not are not strangers to illness and are emotionally complex enough to deal with narratives um, that address illness and and, and terminal illness um, and mortality. I would agree. Also, argue that um, young adults are emotionally complex enough and capable of consuming narratives that deal with illness. And I think this is mostly because um, illness, as we all know, does not discriminate. Um, it is not only it does not only afflict the old and the infirm, but I think all people, even young people, um, have some sort of relationship with illness, um, either through their own experiences or through the experiences of someone that they know. And whether illness is acute or chronic or terminal, I think everyone is touched by it. So I think this idea of um, necessarily avoiding these topics um, does a disservice to the lived experiences of, of children and young adults. I do understand or I can understand this argument that to utilize, um, for example, cancer um, as um, a way to to sort of drive a narrative or to to create tension is potentially cheap um, if not done well. But I do not think that necessarily means that authors must avoid um, dealing with uh, issues of illness and sickness in their in their fictionalized. Uh, or in fictional narratives. Um, but I also kind of want to talk about um, books that I have read um, that have meant that sort of deal with uh, issues of illness and sickness and why it is something that I find so fascinating and interesting. Um, I have dealt with my own issues with illness and I know it has always helped me. Um, often I turn to then books to sort of help me through whatever it is that I'm going through. Um, so I'm just going to talk about a few books that I have read that have really sort of stayed with me and meant something to me. Um, these are not young adult. While, while I talked about sort of the young adult novels and the rise of sick lit um, because I don't really read young adult literature that often. All these books that I'm going to be talking about are, these are memoir, um, but they're, this is by no means a, an exhaustive or extensive um, list of, of great books that deal with illness. The first one is Amy Berkowitz's Tender Points. 
Um, this was published by the press Timeless Infinite Light. Points um, is a memoir slash lyric essay. Um, I'm not really quite sure how to classify this necessarily in terms of genre, um, but this deals with or concerns the author's experience with fibromyalgia. For those of you who are not familiar with fibromyalgia, it is a chronic illness that causes often severe pain to its sufferers. Another thing that's interesting about uh, fibromyalgia and about this narrative is that it often afflicts women. Um, I think, or I believe that 90%, somewhere upwards of 90% of all sufferers of fibromyalgia are women. So in Tender Points, Berkowitz also discusses this idea of, of gendered illness, of the intersection of illness and identity, and the way in which that can often um, affect how one deals with image, or excuse me, with illness and how illness is perceived. While she does not discuss race, I think it's there's something to be said about the way in both both gender and race affect um, how one experiences illness. Often, I think because um, race and gender do do matter in terms of how one is perceived, whether or not um, th their complaints are taken seriously and are considered worthy of intervention, particularly when it comes to chronic pain um, and chronic pain that is not then also associated with a sort of an obvious um, illness that is not, that is sort of chronic and perhaps not life-threatening, but deeply destabilizing and traumatic. Something that I think also is interesting about Tender Points is that it, it deals really um, sort of head-on with this idea of pain, which is often not discussed, um, but I think is inextricable with uh, conversations around illness, sort of the ineffability of pain, the way in which words are sort of in, uh, it's sort of impossible uh, to convey um, experiences of pain, even though as human beings we usually all have experienced physical pain. Um, so this is Tender Point. Um, another really wonderful memoir is Sarah Mancuso's The Two Kinds of, De of Decay. Um, this is a memoir and sort of another lyric essay, as you might be able to see, um, just sort of paging through. Um, <clears throat> but this deals with the author's uh, sudden onset of, of illness when she, I believe she was entering college um, and she was dealing with a chronic illness that for a very long time no one could really understand what was wrong with her. So something that's interesting about both uh, The Two Kinds of Decay and Tender Points is the way uh, in which they both sort of fall under this category of the lyric essay. And I'm not the first person to make this connection, but there seems to be, especially in memoir, um, a, a sort of a strong connection between the genre of the lyric essay and illness. But I think it might be because we could also perhaps consider uh, illness um, or illness narratives as also trauma narratives. Trauma really fractures narrative. Um, through its sort of fracturing of time, where it sort of repeats and folds in on itself. Um, and that is why perhaps uh, this idea of the lyric essay, which is a little bit, is, is not as sort of linear, but is sort of more obviously lyric, as it is called, uh, might suit itself to discussions of illness. And also, this isn't a memoir. This is nonfiction. It's The Body in Pain. Um, and the subtitle is The Making and Unmaking of the World. Um, this is a, a pretty famous text when it comes to talking about like the theory of pain in the body. Um, it's sort of a, a seminal text that is often quoted in discussions of illness and pain. Um, it is very dense and very academic in its language as you might see from even just the way the pages look. Um, but what something that's really interesting about this is that it talks about the way in which pain often destroys language. So in considering sort of how, what, what are the intersections between illness, pain, and language, um, and illness, you know, illness narratives and sick lit, I think this idea of, of the place of pain and how to write pain and, and how pain sort of destroys language um, is very interesting.
So those are a few books that I sort of have with me and I have read and reread over and over. Um, but there are other books that I also um, hope to pick up. One, uh, which is Audre Lorde's The Cancer Journals. Um, Audre Lorde, the poet who uh, battled cancer for 14 years before dying mm -hmm. of liver cancer. But it, once again, this idea of sort of identity and illness and how illness really affects one's sense of self, how it might sort of change one's perception of the world, and how one sort of is perceived as sort of someone who is ill. Um, another book that I want to pick up that I've been meaning to pick up but haven't yet is Susan Sontag's Illness as Metaphor, uh, which is very famous um, and is often also quoted in discussions of illness um, and sort of illness and identity and illness in literature. Susan Sontag's main point and premise of her book is that illness should not be used as a metaphor. Um, illness is often used as a metaphor and I think this is sort of noticeable. Um, uh, particularly in sort of 18th and 19th century literature in which illness often stands in as a sort of a symbol or characterization of, of purity. I think there's also something to say about the way in which illness is often feminized. So we can look at, for example, the trope of the consumptive heroine, this idea that the ideal woman is dying, um, that there is something about frailty and illness, particularly this idea of consumption, um, the highest mark of, of like sort of the pure like a feminine ideal and the sort of the ideal woman will expire at the end of the plot. Those are a few books that a few sort of uh, nonfiction books that I, I want to pick up but I think also uh, poetry as well can also deal with or discuss illness in very interesting ways. Um, uh, Jason Schindler's Stupid Hope, which I have read, which came out um, from Grey Wolf a couple years ago, was published posthumously after the author passed away um, from cancer, but was written uh, while the author was being treated for lymphoma and leukemia. Not all of the author's poems deal with illness, but um, it's just some, most of them do, and it's just really beautiful. Another really interesting collection of poetry that deals with both illness and really pain is the collection Teratology by Susanna Nevinson. Um, I think once again coming back to this idea of sort of the ineffability of pain and how pain can really only be expressed through metaphor um, but it's very sort of hard to successfully um, convey feelings of physical pain. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the collection Teratology is sort of uh, the poem's power and ability to really convey to its readers, um, the speakers, their own experience with pain. And I think that's a mark of a really successful writer. One last one that I want to talk about, I haven't read, um, have heard about, been meaning to pick up. Um, is the collection uh, Dot Head by Amit Mamudar, who is, I believe, the Poet Laureate of Ohio. Um, one reason that I want to pick up this collection, uh, not only because I've heard it's really wonderful, but because the author is a radiologist, um, and I have read essays in which he sort of talks about how his profession as a doctor also affects sort of the way that he sees the world and also his writing and as I feel connected to that because my father was a radiologist um, so I feel sort of personally invested in in those kinds of perspectives. So that's really my thoughts about my sort of general thoughts about illness, uh, writing, memoir, some books that I've read, the background conversation around young adult literature. Um, I will link most of the, art the articles that I've mentioned and all of the books that I also mentioned below. Um, so let me know what you